Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold. Two weeks ago, I showed you some footage of my baby goldfish fry that are in that aquarium right behind me there. Over the past few weeks, I've been collecting some footage of my fry, and in today's video, you're gonna get to see some footage of them from when they were two weeks old, and then of course, some footage of them from today, and today they're four weeks old. You're gonna see a big difference in how they looked just a couple weeks ago to how they look now today. They've grown a ton, and I'm really excited to show you guys how they're developing. My new batch of goldfish fry are about two weeks old today. I might actually net all of them out today and do a 100% water change on this tank. The bottom of it is looking pretty grody from all the brine shrimp egg shells that got in here. When I do that today, I can show you guys my group of culls and explain like why certain ones were culled and why certain ones were kept. I have their brine shrimp hatcheries set up and running over here. The one that's like a little bit farther forward is the one that's ready to be fed this morning. I could feed this one tonight if I wanted to and then this one again in the morning, that one again tomorrow night, but what I've been doing so far is just feeding them one each day. That's been enough so far, but I think today I'm actually gonna up it to two a day. They're big enough now where they're eating them all before the next feeding would have been. There's so few fry in here. Sometimes goldfish spawns can be thousands of babies, you guys, but this swan is very, very tiny. Only 158 fry at first count, so only one brine shrimp hatchery was enough to feed them at first for an entire 24 hours. But they are getting so much bigger now and their appetites are bigger too, they're eating more, so I think I'm gonna up them to two a day. Before I feed them, I'm gonna do a water change because it wouldn't make any sense to feed them and do a water change right after. Now this is not the most efficient way to do it, of course, but my spawn is so small that I'm gonna do it this way. I'm just gonna net each one out individually so I don't suck up any of them while I'm changing the water and I'm gonna keep them in a bowl while I'm changing the water and when I'm done, I'm just gonna put them back in. What I've done in the past sometimes is use a length of airline tubing to do the water change with. It creates such a weak suction that it usually doesn't suck up too many of the babies. So I would siphon it with that airline tubing into a bucket on the floor and then at the end, if there are any fry that have been sucked up, you can actually scoop them right out of the bucket and put them back in the tank and do it that way but I want like a, a deeper clean because there is so much gunk on the bottom of this aquarium. So I'm just gonna scoop each one of the fry out and do a really, really full, complete water chain. I'm now gonna start my first cull, so I'm gonna look at every one of these 147 goldfish fry individually and decide whether they're keepers or they should be culled. So the process that I use is I just get all of them in one bowl, and then in the middle I have my viewing box. And I like using this because it gives me a clear, flat panel where I can look at the fish without any distortion from the side, and I can also look at the fish from the top. And the ones that are keepers, I put in here and then I'm gonna have this filled up with water too actually I forgot that for the ones that are not keepers and I'll set them aside and usually what I do is I just put a few drops of clove oil in there and call them that way let's take a look at some of my culls it's gonna be hard to tell because they're so tiny, but there are reasons that each one of these is a cull. This one right here, for example, has a crooked spine. Now, obviously a fish with a crooked spine is not gonna have good survivability, and I don't wanna be breeding fish that don't have good survivability or don't swim right or are unhealthy. So, any that have crooked spines like that are definitely automatic culls. I've planned on for a long time now and I still do plan on making a really in-depth video about culling, why culling is so necessary with goldfish fry. I have a blog post about it actually which I'll link to in the description section of this video below. I want to make a really nice planned out well presented video about that topic that goes in more in depth than I can right now in this vlog. So I'm gonna do that at some point in the future, but for now I just wanted to give you guys kind of like a quick snapshot of the process of culling for me, what it looks like. It's different for every goldfish breeder. I breed on a very, very small scale compared to a lot of them, so 
The way I do it is probably really different than the way a lot of other people do it, but the general principles are the same. So we've seen the culls, and here are the keepers. They're only about two weeks old, so at this size, it's way, way easier to point out like really obvious flaws, like bent backs and tails that are flipped up on one side, and it's a lot more difficult to point out ones that are gonna turn out nice at this size, because they just don't have their features yet to be able to tell. So these are how many I'm keeping now. In another couple of weeks, when they get a little more size on them and start showing their features better, I will do another cull. You'll have to continue doing culls every, I don't know, two to four weeks or so until they reach a pretty good size just to be able to weed out all the deformities as they pop up because some of these deformities take a while to really become apparent. These guys are ready to go back in now. So the first step in harvesting these brine shrimp is turning off the bubbler so that they will settle. You can see how all the brine shrimp have pretty much settled into this region. So I'm gonna slowly open up the valve and watch the brine shrimp pour out. You can see these things here kind of like stuck to the side, the more brownish things. Those are the shells of the hatched brine shrimp and the more orangey things are the actual brine shrimp themselves. So let's give these guys some of these brine shrimp. Now that I've fed them, I'm just gonna reset the brine shrimp hatchery so I can use it again in 12 to 24 hours. And then I'll slide that one back and this one forward so I know which one is the next one to feed from. Right now it's really, really easy to tell because you can see this one has an orangey color to it, whereas this one is just brown. So what you're seeing here is just the eggs. And what you're seeing here is some eggshells mixed in with the actual live baby brine shrimp. Here are the little guys now at four weeks old, looking so cute. Whenever I come out here to the fish room, they all congregate towards the front of the glass and wiggle their little butts back and forth. I think they've already developed the ability to recognize me and they know that when I come into the fish room, it's gonna be time for food. They quickly graduated from one feeding a day to two feedings a day of baby brine shrimp and now it's to the point where even two feedings a day of live baby brine shrimp isn't quite enough for them and they're getting pretty big too. It's actually kind of comical watching them try to eat the live baby brine shrimp now because the brine shrimp are so so tiny and these guys are really starting to get to that point where they're just a little bit too big for the brine shrimp. So very soon here I'm gonna start mixing in probably also some gel food and even even some frozen brine shrimp and gradually start weaning them off of the live baby brine shrimp. I'm going to be collecting all of these babies today, doing a nice big water change for them because the water's a little cloudy here and they are in need of a water change. So I'm going to be doing a water change today and then I will cull them for any deformities that I didn't notice in the last cull and then I'll put them back in here into their fresh clean tank and I'll do another feeding. I've finished draining the tank and rinsing out the sponge filter, actually just squeezing it out in the aquarium water, not rinsing it out because that would kill the beneficial bacteria. I'm now refilling it with dechlorinated water and then over here I've got my little culling station the same as when they were two weeks old but they're a lot bigger now so I'll be able to see some more deformities a lot more easily so I'm all done looking over each and every fish now here are the culls and here are the keepers the vast majority of the culls, we'll take a closer look at them in a little bit, but the vast majority of them were because one side of the tail is flipped up way more than the other side and they had a hard time swimming. There were 107 before culling. After culling, I have 74 that I have identified as keepers for now. And then over here, we've got the culls and there are 33 of them. I'm gonna pick out a few of them and show you what I mean. Oh, that one's really severe. If you ever breed goldfish for yourself too, you can know what to do. So you can see that all of these ones have a tail fin that leans more to one side or pulls more to one side than it does the other. As they're swimming in the aquarium even, you can point these ones out really easily amongst the hundreds of other fry because they swim funny. They just, they don't swim very well. Sometimes when they try to swim really fast, they end up going in spirals. Sometimes it can be a really subtle pull to one side more than the other. 
and in that case it can be hard to know what to do but what I have found is that a small flaw in a small fish ends up being a large flaw in a large fish the flaws don't go away or get any better just because the fish grows bigger. On the contrary, the flaws actually get bigger with the fish as the fish grows. So here are my keepers ready to go back into their aquarium. You wouldn't be able to have any of the goldfish breeds that you know and love today without serious breeders that culled their fish for quality and deformities. I don't want to be putting out goldfish into the world that are deformed and have a hard time swimming and don't survive well because of it. I want to make sure that I'm breeding healthy fish that survive well and when I send them off to someone that purchased them, I'm sending off a healthy fish that's going to have a healthy life. I also of course have limited space so I want to make sure that the ones that I'm keeping that are healthy and are going to survive well and do well in the future have enough space per fish. It's been getting a little cramped as the fish have been growing and growing and eating tons and growing more. I needed to cull so that I had more space per fish for the remaining healthy ones that were going to have good longevity to their lives. It's really in the best interest of the hobby and the healthy good fish that you have. Now I'm gonna feed them with their baby brine shrimp that I've been culturing for 24 hours. baby brine shrimp are just so so tiny it's like snow falling around them and they're gobbling it up they're so happy thanks for watching guys I'm gonna continue to share updates with you guys as they grow so I hope you're just excited as I am to watch that entire process unfold before our eyes and sooner or later before we know it they're gonna be just as big as these little guys right here <laughs> We are so, so close to 100,000 subscribers here on this channel and I could not be more excited about it. I've been working towards that milestone for a really long time now. So grateful to you guys for helping me make that dream a reality. And I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be doing something a little special, a little different, something I've never done before once we reach 100,000 subscribers, which should be pretty soon. Even sooner if you tell your friends to subscribe. Just saying. I'm going to be doing a one-time limited edition run of solid gold t-shirts that are going to say something along the lines of thank you for 100,000 subscribers, love Jenny. Solid Gold Aquatics is only going to continue to grow and grow and grow from here so you'll be able to wear the shirt and by doing so say that hey I was here since 100,000 subscribers okay. So I just wanted to give you guys like a little heads up about that that will be coming in the future. It's going to be like I said a limited time limited edition run of these special t-shirts that I won't make any other time. Stay tuned for that. I won't release the link or the sale won't go live or anything like that until we actually reach 100,000 subscribers. Thanks again for watching and until next time, stay gold.